Hello everyone and welcome to another math tutorial. In this video, we are going to introduce three-dimensional solids. The main content in this video is primarily going to center on vocabulary. It's not really going to be anything in the way of actual problem solving as this is an introductory lesson. Uh, so we're going to talk about what kinds of three-dimensional figures we have. We're going to talk about how we can classify solids. And then we're going to look at something called cross sections, which are just kind of like slices of three dimensional figures. All right, let's jump right in. Okay, first thing we want to start with is what's a polyhedron? A polyhedron is simply a solid that is bound by polygons on all sides. That's important. In order to be a polyhedron, all of the sides have to be polygons. In a polyhedron, we've got some different vocabulary that we need to be uh, accustomed with. The faces are simply the sides of the polyhedron. Where two faces or two sides meet, we have edges. Where edges come together and meet, we have vertices. Or singular, we have a vertex. Okay, I have this slide put together to give you some ideas on what polyhedrons can look like, and then what kinds of three-dimensional figures are not polyhedrons. I have some, so some handhelds that I can show you as well. Uh, let's start with the, the top one under polyhedron, which is a prism. I hope you can see this well enough. Here's a, an example of a prism. So a prism has a, a bottom and a top face. Uh, we call these bases, and these bases are going to be parallel to each other. And then we've got faces that uh, wrap around the figure, kind of connecting the two bases. Also, we could see uh, what we call a, a pyramid. A pyramid like this one here, it is very similar to the prism. However, it only has one base. It does not have the bottom and the top. The bottom here is a square. We don't see a square on top. We just see coming to a point on top. So that's a pyramid. So we've got prisms, pyramids that make up polyhedrons. Now, kinds of things that are not polyhedrons, basically anything where an edge is not gonna be a polygon. So you're gonna see circular edges. So you've got things like this, which are cylinders. You still have a top and bottom, you still have bases, but it's curved all the way around. You also have things like cones. A uh, cone is like the cylinder, except it only has the single base. It doesn't have one on top as well. And then you have three-dimensional figures like spheres, which everybody's familiar with. This is just like your tennis ball, baseball, basketball, etc. It is an example of a sphere. All right, let's talk about naming a prism or a pyramid. We all want to be using the same convention when we name a shape. Uh, because when I say something, you know, if I say rectangular pyramid, you need to be able to, to be able to create kind of a mental image of what that actually is. So when we name prism or pyramid, we name it by the shape of the polygon on its base. Okay, so you want to find the base of the polyhedron and then name it based on that shape. So when I look at this first one here on the left, what I kind of see is a shape like this. And these shapes, you know, they can be manipulated. They can lay flat, they can lay tall, you know, however you want to lay them. So you see it like this, you know, which maybe looks like this. If you want to, you can think of it as like standing it up. Any way to see, you know, is the top and bottom these two shapes, are the bases these two shapes. Either way you look at it, the bases of this particular polyhedron are, are rectangles. So I'm gonna call this a rectangular prism. So what's the shape of the base? And then do we have a prism or a pyramid? That's kind of how you're gonna name them. Okay, now over on the next one, uh, so we're looking at something like this. It is a pyramid, We've got a point on top. The base of that pyramid though, if you look at the figure on the paper or the one in my hand, the base of this pyramid has six sides. Because it has six sides, I'm going to call this a hexagonal pyramid. Okay, next slide, just a couple more to practice naming. When I look at this one on the left, the way it's kind of orientated, it looks like that maybe the rectangle is on bottom. However, I don't see a rectangle on top. I have to see this prism and kind of like stand it up. Okay, if you could stand it up. Kind of like this, it's not quite the exact same triangular prism, but if I see it like this, and then I have to almost just stand it up so I can see that the top and bottom are the same shape. In this case, they're triangles. So I would call this 
a triangular prism. The other shape is not a prism. This is a pyramid. The faces come to a point, a vertex on top. The base shape is a square. So you could say a square pyramid. All squares are rectangles. You could also say a rectangular pyramid. Either of those are gonna be fine. Uh, so I'm gonna write them both. I'm gonna say square or rectangular pyramid. Okay, the next thing to talk about is uh, what we call a cross section. A cross section is just the intersection of a plane and a solid figure. So I don't have great handhelds that I can put up in front of the camera to show you, but I'll, I'll do my best here. So if we have this three dimensional figure and then we have, here's just a note card, which is my plane surface. Imagine if I were to be able to take this plane surface and just kind of slice it right through this prism. Uh, the idea then is what's the shape of that slice that you take off, right? If you could like peel a slice off of here, what's the shape of that? Here in this slide, we've got just simply a, a cube. And depending on how you slice it, right? If I slice it like this, you can see that the shape of that slice is a square. If I slice it from uh, kind of diagonally through the inside like that, well, we can see that the shape of that slice is a rectangle. And then if I, on this one, picture over here, if I just slice off like one of the corners, well, then we've got a triangle. Uh, it's a nice example to illustrate that, you know, the, the shape of the solid that you have doesn't mean that every slice you take out of it is going to be the exact same shape. It depends on, on on what particular slice you might be looking at. So those are what we call cross sections. All right, let's do the best we can on this slide to, to see these slices, to see these cross sections. So this, the directions say describe the shape of the cross section. So let's start in the top left corner. We've got this prism. If you look closely, you can see that the bases are shaped like pentagons. And we're just taking a slice like straight down the top, right through prism. And so the slice that I see right here is shaped just like the bases. Uh, the slice of that is a pentagon. Let's go over to the right here. Here we've got a cube and we're taking a slice out of that cube in such a way that the shape that we're getting is four-sided. Looks like that. It appears to me, and this is true because the top and the bottom are parallel, that we've got two parallel sides and then two sides that are not parallel. That makes this a trapezoid. Next, we've got a cone and we're just slicing right through parallel to the base of that cone. Since the base of this cone is a circle, that means the slice that we're taking out of this it's also a circle. And finally, we've got a cylinder and we've sliced the cylinder perpendicular to the bases. And when I do that, the shape that is created is a rectangle. So there's some cross sections. You'll get some practice of that, uh, no doubt, in your assignment as well. Okay, the final thing to talk about, and again, it's kind of tricky to see this uh, on uh, a video, but we're going to just do the best we can explaining it. It's called a solid of revolution. And a solid of revolution is a three-dimensional figure formed by rotating a two-dimensional figure about its axis. And so if I can bring my note card back real quick, think of it like this. If you've got like a two-dimensional surface and I create or hold it on an axis right here, if I were to rotate that around, it's going to create a three-dimensional figure. So the idea is what's created from these revolutions, these rotations. And so here, just an example, you can see that we start with just a rectangle. And if I rotate that rectangle, so you can see here, it's like rotating beneath the paper, behind the paper, and then it rotates out around. Have, when we uh, rotate that, it looks like we've got a three-dimensional figure and it's just a cylinder. Uh, so we'll do a little bit of practice, uh, see if we can uh, describe these solids of revolution. Okay, first example, describe the solid produced by rotating the figure around the given axis. So we've got a rectangle, and this one just kind of piggyback off the, the last slide here. Uh, we've got a rectangle. We want to take this rectangle and we want to rotate it around this axis. So think about 
uh, you know, where it's sitting right now, if it comes up off the paper and then goes back behind the paper, you know, what do we create? If I want to describe this, how much detail you want to use to describe it, it is up to you. But I would say that this would create a cylinder with a, a radius of four and a height of nine. And, and let's see, here's what it would look like rotated. And that's exactly what we see. We, we see you know, this length four, this being the center of this cylinder, uh, rotates around to create that circle. So there's our radius. And then if the circles are the bases, then between the two bases, the nine is the height of that cylinder. Okay, on to our final example. Same directions, describe the solid produced by rotating the figure around the given axis. So here we've got just a triangle. We're gonna take that triangle and we're gonna rotate it around this axis right here. So if I do that, if I can envision this kind of coming off the paper and then going back around, what's gonna happen, I think what we're gonna see is a cone with a radius. Okay, so think about it rotating so that we've got the same thing over here on this side and coming off the paper. So this is the center. I would make the radius down here too. And I would have the height of this cone of five. And let's see if that's what it does in fact look like. Okay, if you have any questions uh, on the content you saw in this video, please leave them in the comment section below. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.